In this video, we will look at how to solder several surface mount packages. There are many ways to solder each of these components, and I will be presenting just one method per component. No method is inherently superior to another, but these are just the ones that I prefer. We will look at fine pitch packages with leads such as TSOP, packages with larger leads such as SOT, fine leadless packages such as QFN, and larger leadless packages such as 0805. The first thing that I like to do is to clean the board with some isopropyl alcohol. Then I take some flux, this time it's a flux paste, and I tack the corners with it so that my chip will be able to stick to the board more easily and so that it will make soldering of the corners easier too. Then I take and place the chip, trying to align it somewhat carefully at this point. It's going to stick because of the flux space, and then I'm going to adjust it a bit more carefully after that. And then I take a little bit of solder and just tack down the corners of the chip so that it won't move when I'm soldering later on. You don't have to be particularly careful at this point as you will be able to remove any solder bridges later on. There, and you can see that the chip now will not move as I try to tap it gently with my finger. After repositioning the board for easier soldering, I'm going to apply the flux paste all along an edge. Again, you don't have to be particularly careful at this point. Then I'm going to apply a little bit of solder to the edge of my bevel tip, and I'm going to drag along the edge. I'm going to go pretty slowly so that the contact is actually made with each pin. Now there's a chance that you're going to form a solder bridge somewhere along the way, usually towards the ends of the chip. And you can see that it's easy to remove them. I just cleaned the tip and then I sort of dabbed at the bridge and it went away. On the other side there's a bit more solder, so it's going to take a little bit longer. But you can see that after a couple of cleanings of the tip and just dragging along, the solder bridges are gone. There's no need for solder wick. If anything, you should apply more flux and try again with a clean tip. And you can see that everything looks clean at this point. All the connections are made. The color seems a little bit off, but that's because of the lighting of the microscope, not the actual color of the solder. Now we're ready to solder the other edge. And so here, once again, I'm going to apply some solder flux. And again, after applying a little bit of solder to the tip of my soldering iron, I'm going to start at one end and drag along. making sure that each connection is made. And yet again, I'm going to end up with a couple of bridges on either end, which can be quickly fixed by cleaning the tip and just dabbing at those locations.
at this point it's nice to clean up your chip a little bit because of all the extra flux on it with a lint free cloth and some isopropyl alcohol The color here looks gold just because of the lighting and I'm going to change it in just a moment. And there you can see the clean solder joints for each of the separate pins. Next, we're going to move on to a different package, in this case an SOT223 package, which has larger contact pads. Just as before, I'm going to start by cleaning the board with some isopropyl alcohol and letting it dry. Then I'm going to apply some flux paste to each of the pads in order to make the chip stick to them a little bit more easily. Then I'm going to place my chip and I don't have to be particularly careful with alignment in this case. You should somewhat align it but you don't have to be extra careful here. And then I'm going to solder one of the pads, probably the largest one in this case here. And here I'm just working a little bit on soldering it a bit better. And if my alignment were off, I could also move it with the tweezers as I'm soldering the larger pad that I just finished. And here I just go through each one of the pins and I solder each one individually because it's already in its proper place. Then I clean it once more with my lint-free cloth and some isopropyl alcohol. And that's it for this kind of a package. And here you can see the connections are made for each of the pins. Next, we move on to a smaller package and also a lead-free package here such as a QFN. As before, I first clean the pads with some isopropyl alcohol and then I apply a very fine layer of solder paste. Not flux paste in this case, but solder paste. I try to make this a very thin layer that I'm applying in order to avoid any bridges during the soldering process. Here you can see the actual chip that I'm going to be soldering. I place it pretty carefully on the pads and I do want to be careful at this point because of the way that it's going to be soldered and since the pins are also close together. Then I take my hot air gun and I just aim it towards it and just hold it over the chip for a little bit.
Then I tap the chip a little bit down to make sure that all of the contacts are actually pressing against the board and I move it around a little bit and you can see that it jumps right back into place which is natural with soldering especially with a hot air gun and that means that soldering has actually taken place. And that's it and at this point you can also inspect the chip on the sides and you can sort of see whether all the contacts are actually soldered. And in case you mess up you can always go back remove it, clean the pads with a soldering iron and try again. The last package that I'm going to demonstrate here is going to be something like a capacitor or a resistor or an inductor, a passive package like this. And the first thing I'll do is again clean the package, the pads, with some isopropyl alcohol. And I like to use solder paste for these and so I'm going to apply some solder paste. In this case I don't have to be particularly careful as I had to with the finer pitch packages for the QFN. Then I place the component, in this case a capacitor, relatively well on the pads. Again I don't have to be too careful with components like this. And again I apply hot air and you'll see what's going to happen. As the solder melts, it basically moves the component into place on its own and you can see that as I move it, it jumps right back into place and even though we used a little bit too much solder, that's okay. So finally, I just like to clean things off a little bit with some more isopropyl alcohol and that's going to be it. Altogether, we have seen how to solder various components using two techniques with slight variations on each one. For fine pitch components with leads, I prefer drag soldering with a bevel tip. For larger lead components, I prefer soldering each bin directly. For no lead components, I prefer a fine layer of solder paste and hot air. And for simpler but small components, I prefer solder paste and hot air as well. Again, these techniques are not the only way to solder SMD components, and different people prefer their own styles. The only way to find out your preference is to try it yourself.